I think most anywhere you go in the country today, whether it's a, it's a, a river bottom or a, along the beaches of the ocean or the lakes, there's something to be found that would cut into some form of a, of a gemstone. Joseph Lazadro, Chicago business leader. His passion for art and nature was born in his native Italy. Son of a cobbler, he learned the craft of lapidary as an adult. His hobby became a legacy when Mr. Lazadro was looking for raw jade to make cufflinks. A Chinese dealer sent him a carved bottle for use, but he thought it too beautiful to cut. Instead, it became the first piece in a priceless collection of art objects, mineral specimens, gems, and gem materials. Through objects of beauty and wonder across ancient and modern culture, explore the world of lapidary art. I'm Joe Lozadro, and I welcome you to the museum. For more than 5,000 years, Chinese carvers have prized one stone above others. Strong, subtle, translucent, colorful, believed to promote wisdom, balance, and peace. Stone of heaven, jade. This rare blue jadeite pagoda rises, rich with imagery, a tautier mask, a monstrous face with clawed paws, phoenix birds, the fanged mouth of the chilin, sun, moon, guardian foo dogs. Unearthed in Myanmar, carved in China, the pagoda may have once burned fragrant incense in Peking's imperial palace during the reign of Emperor Qianlong. Here its bells ring out a wish for good luck and the attainment of the highest of human goals. A skilled carver finds the story within each piece of jade. The lavender and green guanyin, goddess of mercy, stands with her acolyte within a delicate bamboo-colored bower. Three hues of jadeite in a single stone are transformed into a ewer, rich in color and symbolic beauty. Although powered hand tools have replaced ancient drills and saws, The carver's task remains a labor of time-consuming effort and remarkable ingenuity. The stone itself dictates the design, but the expression of symbolism and meaning in the final work of art is a lasting tribute to the skill of the carver. A 1791 gift to the Emperor Qianlong commemorates his visits to southern China. A cinnabar screen encrusted with jade, amber, ivory, coral, and gemstones. A poem, a birthday wish, a remembrance. Each panel is a scene in itself, reflecting the poetry carved in ivory above the symbolic imagery. Spring in the south of the Yangtze River. Let wealth and nobility be always yours. Let cold beauty at the east fence and the wild feeling on the lotus pond. Pine and crane bring longevity. Phoenix stands high on the mountain. One trip full of prosperity. 800 years of long, long life. The bamboo announces peace to celebrate a white eyebrow birthday.
Much as carvers of hard stone use imagery and symbolism to tell stories, sometimes a piece itself becomes the central character in a dramatic plot. Between the years 1368 and 1644, master carvers created an archaic-style ritual bronze masterpiece in low relief. A five-piece spinach green nephrite altar set comprised of a censer, candlesticks, and a pair of graceful vases. The censer features identical patterns separated by flashes. The fanged open mouths of the full lion heads form the upper trunks of the legs adorned with cicada bodies. A single band of thunder scroll design runs at the base of the legs, mirroring the lip of the censer and the rim of the cover. Stylized sheath designs are carved just below the neck of the censer. Rectangular frames of key dragons alternate with hemispheres. The finia depicts the most powerful of all creatures, the horned dragon holding the pearl of potentiality, as it is often called. But the beauty and serenity of the Ming-era ceremonial set displayed at the Yuan Ming Yuan Summer Palace belie a turbulent journey to America. Built during the Qing Dynasty, the old Summer Palace was destroyed when the British and French troops under Lord Elgin retaliated against the Qing government during the Second Opium War. Among other treasures, the altar set was looted in the aftermath of the occupation. In 1860, it was sold at auction to Major Great Head of the Royal Bengal Engineers, where it remained until 1949. How did this magnificent 17th century altar set survive a turbulent journey across time? The answer, durability and beauty, reveals why jade has long been sought after and prized around the world. Minerals and rocks are the raw materials of lapidary art. Nephrite and jadeite, the two forms of jade used in lapidary art, are actually minerals. Minerals occur naturally. They aren't made, like steel or brass. They're inorganic, which means they don't come from plants or animals. They also have crystalline structures, which means they're made out of orderly, repeated patterns of atoms. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. To be considered a rock, a substance must be a naturally occurring combination of one or more minerals. Rocks are sorted into three classes, depending on how they are formed in nature. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Most of the Earth's rocks are igneous, which means they were created in magma or lava. Magma is molten rock that churns beneath the Earth's surface. When the rocks above are weakened and the pressure of the magma reaches a critical point, it erupts through a volcano and turns into lava. However, not all magma is released through volcanoes. Granite is an example of magma that cools and crystallizes deep underground. Over time, erosion exposes the crystalline rock to the surface. Sedimentary rocks are formed by layers of sediments, broken bits of rocks. As rocks break down through erosional processes like wind, rain, and ice, the sediments could reform into sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rocks are any type of rock, igneous, sedimentary, or even other metamorphic rocks that have been changed through heat and pressure. This can happen when rocks are pushed together when mountains are formed. The rock cycle is a continuous process in which rocks are formed, broken down, and reformed. The rock cycle has no beginning or end. Igneous rocks are formed either through eruption or slow cooling. Over time, they may be broken down into sediments, which form layers. As those layers solidify, they turn into sedimentary rocks. As more layers build upon existing layers, significant heat and pressure occur and change into metamorphic rocks. Eventually, they may be remelted to form magma, and the process may begin again. But it is not necessary for the rocks to follow that pattern. Sometimes, sedimentary rocks are formed from the remains of living organisms called fossils. Here in Illinois, the bedrock underfoot is made of limestone and dolomite. These rocks are formed in ancient seas as bit of shells and other fossils accumulate over time. 
Fossils are the remains of living things that have been preserved in rock. Plants, animals, even bacteria have been found as fossils. One way fossils form is by the process of mineral replacement, when parts of the living organism have been replaced by minerals. One of the best examples of this process is petrified wood. Many times, carvers used organic materials, those that are of animal or plant origin. This puzzle ball began as a solid piece of ivory. Its carver created 24 spheres that rotate freely, one inside the other. The Last Supper was carved in Europe in the 19th century based on Leonardo da Vinci's painting. The inscription on the base reads, One of you, this night, will betray me. The coral guanyin was carved from a rare red coral. Coral comes from undersea animals. Coral polyps create colonies that slowly grow, and their hard shells create complex branches and structures. Amber is created from tree resin that hardens over long periods of time. In the Italian harvest carving, a Roman family celebrates a successful harvest. Gem cutting, shaping, and polishing create surfaces that refract and reflect light, creating sparkling and glowing effects. Castle Lizadro, created by William Tulliday of England, combines the art of lapidary and goldsmithing, mineral specimens with cut stone. On a large slab of Brazilian agate, the 18-carat gold castle rises from the lustrous glow of amethyst, malachite, azurite, and vanadinite. More than 100 faceted diamonds sparkle in the windows, giving the appearance of an occupied residence ready to welcome weary travelers. The Lizadro Museum's dioramas feature scenes with three-dimensional figures. These whimsical works of art feature gemstone creatures in their natural environment, all of which were carved in Idar Oberstein, Germany. The neighboring villages of Idar and Oberstein are leading gem-cutting centers of the world with a history of mining and lapidary dating back hundreds of years. Positioned on the banks of the Nahi River, Idar Oberstein is a region where agate was mined for thousands of years. Electricity has replaced the river as a source of power, and most of the agate and other stones are now imported from Brazil. But the tradition of fine carving continues to this day. Children and adults alike are fascinated by the gemstone inhabitants of these tributes to Joseph Lazadro's fascination with the natural world and Idar Oberstein's traditional mastery of gemstone carving. In Florence and Rome, Italy, artists create mosaics so seamless they look like paintings. Roman micro-mosaics utilize tiny fragments of tesserae, colored by minerals. Each piece is placed into a grout base to create a scene from Roman antiquity. In Florence, a technique known as commesso di pietra dura, or the joining together of hard stone, skillfully assembles hundreds of cut and polished natural stones. From a photograph, a diagram is made, and from the diagram, a finished piece. This portrait of Joseph Lazadro that hangs in the museum contains over 1,300 pieces of natural stone joined together without the use of grout. Uh, this uh, concludes the program, and I hope that uh, you've enjoyed it and uh, you enjoy the museum. Thank you very much.